I would like to be a fish for a change. Someday, it'll be possible. Someday? For certain. You too can be a fish. Ho ho ho, okay, here's the deal. I've been trying to have Christmas games for Christmas on the Game Dungeon for a while now, and failing that, winter games. But this is starting to be a problem. Christmas games are usually scraping the bottom of the barrel as it is. And while there are more good winter games, none of them are really calling to me. But other games are. So what I'm trying to say here is no more Christmas. I don't want to save it this year. So Christmas has fallen. I repeat, Christmas has fallen. No more Christmas games. Well, never say never, but all future Christmas games have to earn their keep like any other. So that probably means the death of Christmas games here. They're just not going to be able to hack it. I mean, I was originally thinking about looking at Steep, but I don't know. It is a snow game, but it wasn't too remarkable. It does get the online only award. Yeah, I will always hand that one out. Because a single player game about skiing downhill is exactly the sort of game you need to have a constant internet connection for. I like the wanton Red Bull advertising on multiple courses. And of course, the Red Bull cinematics. Red Bull sure are firing on all cylinders right now. And the Red Bull sponsored events. And just tricking a Red Bull before a run after being flown up on the Red Bull helicopter. Red Bull. Anyway, the main reason I considered it was because on some of the slopes, the mountains start talking to you in a European accent. And this one has upset there are less people skiing on it now than during the Olympics, I think. I am peak of the damned. And I am angry that my once gleaming winter sports palaces now lie rotting and deserted. Well, they obviously didn't do their research on this one. As someone who grew up around mountains, I can guarantee they do not care if you ski on them or not. They probably don't care about anything. But if mountains did have something to tell us, it would be something like this. Bah. When it's not the mountains talking to you, the dialogue is sheer torture. Oh man, this is awesome! Oh yeah! This is incredible! But you can skip most of it. I like the ice crystal things. Don't usually see that on the slopes. And I hate the map navigation with a passion since it likes to slam to a halt sporadically. And if I force it to zoom out, it will shove me back in. I can't figure out the pattern of when I can scroll up or rotate, when I can't, and when the camera will just shove me wherever it wants to go. Just trust me when I say it's really bad. It's a decent game, or it would be if it wasn't on death row. Why do they have to keep doing this? So yeah, that's steep. If you want to be nitpicky, then that was the Christmas episode for you. So Christmas is done. Now we're in post-Christmas territory. The new policy is, I'll just have games for Christmas that don't aggressively go against the spirit of Christmas. Unless they actually are Christmas games. But again, that probably won't happen. So I won't be having games for the holidays where somebody's head explodes. Well, no, I can't promise that. But I'll be going in on good faith that nobody's head explodes in the episode. Then whatever happens, happens. So with that in mind, Alien Rampage. Oh wait, no, State of Mind. This is an adventure game I've played some of before, and it was just giving me that vibe that this one felt right for Christmas. I don't know, something about it just gives me that feeling. So let's find out what's happening. Berlin, 2048. Though, spoiler, unlike that mountain, nobody in the game has a European accent. That's you, Richard Nolan. You've been wrecked. The android's gonna shoot you up with something. It starts off and you have partial amnesia. I kind of resent the game quizzing me about my life when I don't know either. I guess that's the point, but... Eh. Yeah, this is one of those games where they don't tell you what's going on, but it slowly falls into place. Or at least I'm assuming. I haven't finished it yet. Well, we were in a car accident apparently, but we're good except for our memory. And we've only lost a little bit. Not who we are, our entire life. Just the past couple days. That's not so bad. We're discharged from the hospital and there are self-driving cars. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking AI is good for stuff where you don't need 100% reliability and people don't die if there's an error. But we'll see what happens. Your account has been charged 25 credits. 25 credits? Hmm, that seems a little steep. Uh, please. So he ignores the homeless guy. Classy. Although to be fair, I'm not sure this scenario would be occurring in the first place. Places with upscale housing like this would have police or security to get him to move so he's not in sight. I think that won't change in the future. If anything, it'll be even more aggressive. Please forgive me. I powered down yesterday. What the hell? Androids everywhere. Well, this is a fancy apartment, though it looks like they don't believe in doors in the future. Not even on the bathroom. Not how I'd design an apartment for a family of three, but okay. And it looks like Richard has some augmented reality going on too. I like how it tells me my books are outdated. Yes, I'm sure many companies would do this if they could. Oh look, your kids' toys are outdated too. Of course they are. And so is our map. Oh, this is the United States of the West. Okay, so maybe the US has colonized Europe. That would explain the lack of German accents. I can't say I see that happening, unless there ends up being mass oil deposits discovered there. This is bigger than Dronegate. Dronegate. Oh, Richard's a Pulitzer Prize winner! Dronegate, people! Speaking of which, flying drones with banner ads so you can't avoid them when you look out your window, I'll rank that as plausible. Probably won't happen on this scale due to energy constraints, but not out of sight either. You know, I still can't decide if that's the sun or the moon. A nanoscan? That Mars nonsense. Can't she listen to me for once? Oh, don't tell me she wants to go to Mars. Yeah, I've got to side with Richard on this one. The public is not going to Mars in 2048. But okay, game. Try to convince me otherwise. Tracy, I want this thing to disappear. Yeah, where is your family? Sir, do you not want to know where your family is? Would you like to see them again, Richard? Then please follow my instructions. Okay, so your wife went to her parents and took your kid and bought you this android, even though she knows you hate androids? Yeah, I think Richard's a tech journalist, but he may hate technology. He's definitely resentful of bots. He's kind of grumpy in general. I don't understand, sir. <laughs> exactly. Completely useless. Ah, a Holovision call or something. I doubt we'll be doing much of this in 2048. It can't go on like this. I know. You have to speak to her. Oh, okay. So this is not your wife. This is your mistress whom you're having an affair with. So Richard's a bitter tech journalist who resents technology and is cheating on his wife. Yeah, I can see why this is our hero. Uh-oh, headache time. Ah! Ah! Time for a smoke. What? Oh, did we go to sleep as Richard and wake up as somebody else? Is this gonna be that kind of game? Actually, no, this is Adam Newman. That's your hollow doctor. Adam's been in a car accident too, is fuzzy about the past few days, and also has a wife and kid. What a coincidence. The hollow doc says I need to take my kid to the clinic, okay? The world, the world, dreams, hands. What's that talking? Arms. Floating. What is this voice? It's just spouting out words. Writing a beam of light. What the hell is this? The universe. It's a head saying words to my kid like it's a sermon. This feels culty. I don't like this thing. Some sort of floating goblin head. I don't know where I am. There are less ads. Looks like Adam doesn't believe in doors either. My kid wants breakfast. What are you eating? Same as always. Uh. Cornflakes, Adam. With hot chocolate. His usual is cornflakes and hot chocolate? That's not healthy and it's gonna make him wired. Okay, you know what? I don't know what's going on. His mom's not here and there's a goblin in my house. I'll give him what he wants. I have to pick my battles here. Oh, 3D printing our food, huh? Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I mean, okay, you might have very basic meals like that, like pasta, maybe a casserole or something, but we're not gonna have replicators from Star Trek. What do you say? Thank you, food assembler. Wait, what? No, the food assembler is a machine. You don't thank machines, they're just... Okay, it's not worth it. This kid could be a lost cause from the get-go. I can accept that. Do I have to go back to the hospital? 
Well, the game doesn't let me say no, so yes. Off we go to the hospital. This is a very upscale neighborhood. Oh, this isn't the Utopia episode, by the way. That one's still coming. Though, is that what this game is going for, too? Adam, are you concerned? Do not forget. You are what counts. What's that voice? You. What are those floating question mark buildings? This is feeling culty again. Oh, shit! It's an earthquake! Get off the glass! What are you doing? Did we just dream that? No, the kid felt it. It's just a geohazard. Geohazard. So the glass just repaired itself? Just another earthquake, huh? Is this California? Well, we take him to the clinic, then bam, back to Richard again. Yeah, the game keeps swapping back and forth between the two. I'm about as confused as someone who was in a car accident with short-term amnesia. But let's see where the game is taking us. You slept 17 hours, sir. Why didn't you wake me? Richard may have possible brain damage for all we know, so he better get started writing his article to be published in the paper. The game lets you choose the tone you want to take, serious or ironic. I looked through both of them, and in both cases, they kind of feel like they were written by somebody who suffered a head injury. I mean, look at this conclusion. So you think you're particularly clever? Particularly interesting? Well, I'm bored already. Tell it to my bot. And if you're too busy, just send your own bot and they can talk it out. And then we can stay out of each other's business. I mean, I think I get the point he's going for, but then he just veers off and switches tracks before it becomes anything coherent. I get the irony of two bots talking to each other, but it's just kind of floating out there, not connected to anything. He's pissed, but I don't feel like I get the reason why he's pissed. Oh, press space to drink whiskey. I didn't notice that. So that was the problem all along. We were riding sober. Aha, we've unlocked sarcastic. Hmm, sarcastic is more coherent, but he doesn't really back up his points. This feels more like an old man complaining about this newfangled technology. Aha, we can drink whiskey again. Now we can write aggressively. Aggressive feels a little unhinged. He's asking the reader to do something extreme and technically explains why, but then doesn't substantiate it. So he's asking the readers to take it on faith that he's right and that people should just destroy their bots. Nobody's gonna do that if you can't convince them. I don't know, I'm not happy with any of these. And we can't drink anymore. He has limits. I guess that's why he makes the big bucks. Eh, sarcastic. Sarcastic only makes me sound cranky, not like I need okay. medication. Well, this isn't really journalism. It's just kind of an off-the-cuff opinion piece that's not very convincing or provocative. But I'll go easy on them, since it's easy to judge when you don't have a head injury. It's been months since I've been hit hard in the head, so I'm trying to put myself in his shoes. Well, I guess this job's done for the day. Time for some chores. What's with the cleaner? Is it broken again? Should I clean up? That's the cleaner's job. Where is that damn thing? Well, what's wrong with the android doing it? And do you really think this Roomba can clean up big chunks of glass like that? Or you can just pick them up yourself. No. The President of the United States reacted shortly after with a video message. He also announced that the Mars colonization program would receive more funding in order to give the citizens of the West a perspective for the future. Yes. Okay. I can believe the President is funding a huge Martian colony project in 2048. Does it mean people are going to live on Mars? Mars. Our future. By being a Martian colonist on Red One, you are helping create a new world. Oh, now that's a nice touch. How the president announces we're funding Mars, then it's immediately followed by a radio advertisement about signing up to go to Mars. One hand washes the other. Well, Richard's getting annoyed that his wife still isn't back yet, so he calls one of her friends. She hasn't seen her, but that's not what he wants to hear. Does she want to leave me? Did she say that? Did she? God, Jennifer, don't make me squeeze it all out of you. Well, she thinks you're having an affair. Are you having an affair? Bye now. Maybe you should call her parents. Shut up! Her dad hasn't seen her either, and we discover she was lying. She never went to her parents. Richard, I know my daughter. She's fine. And when she finally ends it with you, she'll be even better. Blah! Where is she? Where is my son? This is all your fault! When she left, was there anyone with her? There was a man. A man? A man! What was his name? 
I can't say anything about that, sir. You're dead, robot. I'll give me that memory chip. All right, got the memory chip. Let's head to work so we can access this thing. You work literally next door at The Voice, a major news outlet. Everybody's talking to me in a patronizing manner, and it's pissing me and Richard off. Rest up for a little while longer, okay? I have to work, Steve. Ah, oh, nonsense. We got Troy now. Take a break. Think of your health. What do you mean you've got Troy now? Is he gonna pay my rent too? Well, you should probably ask him that yourself. Steve, do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? Didn't you have to get to Frank? Okay, okay. I wanted to introduce myself. Not now, please. I'm busy. Oh, but I- I said not now! Okay, fine. Richard, come in. Yeah, what? Uh, Richard, listen. You don't have to rush back into it. Think of your health. Uh-oh, he's patronizing me too. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, I have time now. Okay. Shut up! We've been given new directives from the management. Yep, yep. Uh, am I fired? You can't be serious, Frank. No, not fired. We... We are just restructuring a little. We would like to have you on board as a freelance writer. You'll get a framework contract for one year, and then after that, we'll see. Yeah, they're soft firing him. You're kicking me out. I can't believe it. I broke Drone Gate, goddammit! Mankind's abolishing itself, Frank. And what, we can't write about that now? I'm not a terrorist. Richard, it's out of my control. The decision's been made. I know where you live, Frank. Now, the game doesn't say this, but I find this particularly believable because the company may be subject to laws where they have to pay unemployment if they straight up fire him. But by getting him to accept a contract offer, they can sidestep all that. Bonus points if the contract is loaded with gotchas, where even though it's technically for one year, they can cancel it at any time. So really, they may terminate the contract in a week or two, and since he's no longer an employee, there's no severance pay. Though I am a little disappointed that Richard doesn't make his case better that we're abolishing humanity. He hasn't backed that up at all, just that he doesn't like androids. Not that that excuses the company's behavior. I hate that passive-aggressive shit, and they portrayed it well in this game. We always like to avoid confrontation whenever possible. Yeah, I can see why this is giving me the Christmas feeling. Richard's having major family problems. He's been pseudo-fired. He's drinking, yelling at people he knows, yelling at his robot. That's keeping it pretty real for the holidays. In fact, I'd say Richard is almost like a half-Scrooge. He's not as wealthy. He's not as grumpy. But he is definitely not in the spirit of Christmas, even though it's January in this game. And half of his problems he's brought upon himself. I guess we'll see if he finds redemption. Back to Adam. You pick up your kid from the clinic. Your aunt calls and tells you you should sue over your car accident. Yeah, maybe. But the exploitation of natural resources, the thing that has made our Earth so scarily unstable over the past years, Project Independence will solve all those problems. Forever. Sounds like Wait, what? Until then, it is still forbidden to leave the city, I'm afraid. This Sunday. This Sunday. Sunday, 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 Sunday! So is he saying fracking is causing the earthquakes, but they're going to solve that forever? And no one can leave the city? Do they mean solve those specific earthquakes? Or just solve earthquakes? That would be a big claim. Or hey, maybe solve the need for resource extraction. How about solve everything while you're at it? After all, this is a cult compound, right? It is a nice one, though. I admit, parts of this look gorgeous. Oh yeah, I guess I should talk about the elephant in the room. This game has a stylized look. It's kind of a mashup of technology, where the character models themselves have a pretty low polygon count and no real textures, just solid colors. It kind of reminds me of Alone in the Dark or Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter 1, by the way. By virtue of Fighter 2, while those models have a closer polygon count to State of Mind, they were using textures on the fighters themselves. So that's farther ahead than this. Except State of Mind does use textures. The environment has texture details, even though as a whole, it's pretty committed to keeping that polygon count down. The best way I can describe this look is as if graphics technology for character models completely froze in 1993. But everything else, except for the polygon budget, kept progressing as normal. It would be fun to travel back in time to the early 90s to show people this game and say this is the future of graphics. Most people would go, wow, that looks awesome. 
But then people who knew more about graphics would see stuff like real-time shadows, reflections, maybe fong shading, all of which are hugely more intensive to process and go, wait a minute. This game would confuse the hell out of graphics people in the early 90s. Personally, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. I mostly get used to it, but it still bugs me when their irises pop outside their eyes. And you know for this game, they're doing that on purpose too. <laughs> Back to Richard. I give a homeless guy some food since I'm curious if this really is going to turn into a Christmas carol. I talk to the local kiosk owner. I read your column for a change. Uh oh. Are you serious? What's your problem with bots anyway? I sell my sons for one of them base fives. Those house bots are only the beginning. Someday soon they'll develop a super AI. Not even Mars will save you then. Oh, so Richard's one of those. Yes, I can believe we'll still be having this conversation in 2048. Speaking of AI, our coworker Steve gets our droid's memory decrypted. Yep, there's our man. He's speaking to my boy. I'll kill him. I'll kill him, Steve. I swear to you, I'll end his life. Oh, all right. I was just vibing. Looks like I hit the mark there. He could just be helping her move. <laughs> helping her move? Where's my wife? We'll check his movement profile and find out who he is. Richard, MoveScan is a police database. We'll find him that way. Eh? Didn't you write a huge article about that? I know, Steve, but this is about my boy. We just need access. That's illegal. That's illegal! Anyway, how are you gonna get- You and me, Steve. We're gonna do this. Alright, man. Give me the hack software. MoveScan? We got you. That's 800. All encrypted, of course. You know, if things get increasingly digital to the point of no privacy, sneaker nets might make a comeback. This strikes me as plausible also. Richard Nolan. Exactly. You got a problem with that? No. But you do. Uh-oh. Richard Nolan is dead. What? Says who? Says Jay. Hear that? Jay says you're dead, Richard. Deal with it. Jay has spoken. Back to Adam. There is one question in this world, John that you should be asking yourself every day. Are you truly happy? Imagine a cave, a small, hollow ball filled with a sweet liquid, like a cherry. What the hell is this? That's how it all, with the brain of a little primeval tapeworm. Let's call him Bob. Of course, Bob was not his real name. Tapeworms had long tapeworm names, just as long as their bellies, of which they were famously proud. But sadly, nobody remembers those true tapeworm names. So the tapeworm did something very interesting. He took his head and carefully turned it inward on himself to the ball with the sweet liquid that was his brain. What the fuck is this toy? This thing would be out in the dumpster if I was his dad. It was already on thin ice with me, but now it's talking to him while he's trying to sleep. It's obviously trying to indoctrinate him with something. I suspect it's just AI nonsense too. Yeah, become a tapeworm, you little freak. And be constantly questioning yourself every day if you're happy. That's not healthy behavior for an adult, let alone a kid. John's not gonna be happy unless he has hot chocolate for breakfast. That doesn't mean he should have it. This part feels like the first or second act of a horror movie. This is not gonna turn out well for your kid, Adam. Oh, and this probably goes without saying, but we're not gonna have levitating toys like this in 2048 unless they're loud ass drones. Unfortunately, we could have freaky AI dolls telling you to do things in your sleep, though. That part's possible. Well, morning comes, and it didn't tell John to stab you in your sleep, thankfully. Hello, buddy. Come with me, little robot. Robot? Yes, go to the hospital, you little robot. Yeah, John's a lost cause. This kid's in too deep, and Adam doesn't have what it takes to pull him back out. Oh well, may as well go to work. And what a coincidence, you work at a news agency also. Though I will say I find that a bit surprising since Adam comes across as incurious and sort of a go along to get along guy. I guess that could be what news agencies will want in the future. Oh, I, nobody's told you? Uh, no. Uh, okay, you should best talk to Fred, like now, and then we'll go get drunk. Uh-oh, getting some deja vu here. Hey, why is that bot sitting in my chair? <laughs> That's a little on the nose. Martha. Good day, Adam. Wonderful to see you back at work. You're sitting in my chair. It is not your chair, Adam. Oh, really? 
Since when? I am not allowed to tell. What? You should speak to the boss. With Fred? What about? I am not allowed to tell. The perfect employee. Oh, look at this. A special office only for members of government agencies. So no more of this cloak and dagger nonsense. In the future, they've set up camp in the news office itself. Uh, yeah, maybe. All the news that's fit to print, right? All right, let's do it. Adam, we missed you. Is that why a robot is sitting in my chair? Yeah, that and... Uh... Yeah, the axe is coming. What the hell is this? You guys going Twilight Zone on me? Cheers to Adam Newman. Our new head of the writer's department. <laughs> He's being promoted. Adam's like the anti-Richard. Everything's going great for him. Earthquake! Ah! Back to Richard. Well, Richard wakes up from an ass beating. That'll teach you to be dead. Though he takes this personally and wants to speak to Jay himself about not being dead. And if you think I've skipped over who Jay is, I really haven't. Well, Steve helps us identify Jay and the club where we might find him. You want to go to Doomsday? Are you mad? There's a raid there every other week. There's a raid there every other week! Well, Doomsday is kind of a hacker's club, and it takes some finagling for us to get clearance to even enter. Richard apparently has some old contact that helps us out. Once you get in, she asks us for money, and curiously, the game gives you the option of refusing. I'm not sure why. That's actually something I was trying to figure out whether Richard is upper middle class or lower upper class. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and his wife is a model on magazine covers. He has a high rise apartment in prime location though it's not overly huge and doesn't have doors. Additionally, they don't seem to hire any servants. The robot servant only happened in the past few days. I really don't know, I'm leaning towards lower upper class. Either way, Richard has plenty of money. Yeah, I'll give you something. Oh, you want more? Sure, hell, have some more. Well, that helps, though we still have to chase down leads to find Jay. Hey, you look like Richard Nolan. Damn straight. Nolan was great. You don't remember Drone Gate? That was big. Yeah, that was big 10 years ago. It's big forever. He's an idiot. Malcolm. There he is. Jay was in the back rooms, hacking the planet. What the hell, man? You're dead. Yeah, I heard that too. Your mind shouldn't be here. At the very least, you should be in a coma. What are you talking about? I enjoy arguments like this. So there's a lot of confusion, but what I think is happening is Jay is saying that Richard wasn't really in a car accident. He was at some new facility that can scan people's brains and upload them to the cloud. And we believe they have uploaded you. Me? Yeah. That's crazy. I'm here. He's got you there. It's still kind of hazy, but it looks like Richard's brain was partially scanned and uploaded, and he was supposed to die after that, but there was a disruption. That's why he can't remember the past few days, and guess where the scan is? Ta-da! Yeah, it's Adam. Except Adam didn't get all of Richard's memories, so he's only a partial clone. I have to assume an AI filled in the gaps or something, because I would think a partial brain scan would only get you a vegetable. And Jay's also part of a revolutionary activist group called Breakpoint. I'm not sure what he's fighting other than the system. Well, that and uploading people's brains. But oh no, it's a raid by the cops! There aren't even patrol officers, just more bots. I like how their batons glow neon green, so it almost kind of fits with the rest of the club. I like it when cops get festive. You know, like those police in Peru that did a drug raid while dressed up as Santa and his elves. Or the ones in Riverside, California, also dressed as Santa and elves, busting a car thief? Keep it up. Anyway, one of the dancers swings back, but they drop him and decide, what the hell, let's just drop everyone. So they open fire on the crowd. Okay, that's blood, so these aren't rubber bullets either. I wonder if there are cops controlling them on the other end, or if this is all AI. Terminate. Terminate. Yeah, this looks like a good time to leave, Richard. Home sweet home. Oh, our robot has something to say. Your situation is without a doubt far from happy, but it shouldn't lead you to suicidal thoughts. What would you know about that? You're not alive. That's not very nice, Richard. What? Am I hurting your feelings? I am registering that you're angry, sir, but you shouldn't take it out on me. Oh, really? Why not? Didn't you say you belong to us? Everything here belongs to me, you Yes! 
Let the Scrooge flow through you. I could hack you up with an axe and not even pay a fine. Who's gonna stop me? Of course, sir. But that wouldn't be very human. Oh, yes, my friend. It would be all too human. So Jay said we need to contact Adam and team up to locate Richard's memories. Or something. It's still a bit confusing. You are a part of me. What? Uh, let me explain. No, please, don't explain anything. Hmm, that could have gone better. Oh, cool. Let's get in an argument with our mistress while we're at it. You wanted to talk to Tracy months ago. I have to go now, Lydia. Yeah, that left us in a good mood. Let's try for round two with Adam. I'm blocking this frequency now. And persuade him to look at Richard's memories or something, then get flashbacks. Well, Adam looks at the memory fragment. 2030. Although this doesn't appear to be Richard's memory, but Tracy's, his wife's. I found most of it unremarkable, but I like how it starts off with her drunk and having been thrown out of a club, but is trying to find a lucky charm she lost. She thinks they threw it in the dumpster, but a hobo won't let you look through it and wants to feel you up. So she starts looking for help from random strangers, which, wouldn't you know it, includes Richard. And then the game got my hopes up because Richard confronts the bum and I was hoping we were going to get into a street fight over who gets to rummage through the dumpster. See, that's my kind of game. I was down for this. They could have even thrown a mini game at me for that and I wouldn't complain. But no, Richard just threatens to call the cops and the bum ends up yielding. Ah, we were so close. And I have to call out the bum for not recognizing an opportunity in the making. If I was the bum in this situation, I would have said, fine, you want to look through the dumpster? That's $20. Then when Richard threatens to call the cops, I say, do it. They'll be here in what, an hour? Or you can pay me and look through the dumpster right now. And you know Richard would have done it because he wants to impress the drunk lady. That bum left money on the table. Flash forward three years and Tracy is now a famous model since one of the guys kidding on her while she was drunk was a photographer for a major company. Funny, life. There's Steve Jobs in the background. I mean, not literally for copyright reasons, but he has some words for you after the interview. Tracy, I'd like to talk to you alone for a minute. Excuse me, but we were just- I didn't ask you. I asked Tracy. Oh! Hey, wait a minute. Don't take that tone with me. But it's exactly the tone you deserve. Oh! I don't believe you know who I am. I do, actually. And I believe your boss is waiting for you. Richard, can you come here, please? This is a joke, right? No! Oh, wow. Fine, okay. Tracy, I have to go. Maybe we'll see each other again later? Richard! Coming, coming. Get back to work, little man. Future Steve Jobs is savage. He wants to hire Tracy for some secret project that has Bond villain vibes all over it. Tracy, I'd like to have you on board for a project. A genetic exploration. Mm-hmm. You need not worry. Well, after the flashbacks, Adam checks back in with Richard, who just straight up tells him he's not real. My city isn't real. You're not real. Okay. That is insane. I'm hanging up. Thankfully, he's easily distracted, and Richard keeps him talking. Tracy? You saw Tracy? Where? When? Where's my wife? Well, so much for that. Back to Richard. Let's talk to Tracy's friend again. She wants you to feel me out. That's what's going on. No. Or maybe she wants revenge. Just wants to make me suffer. Richard. Or she probably wants you to oversee the breakup. Tell me she's leaving me in stages. Hey, are you completely... You're in this together. You're not calling because you care about me. She's not taking my kid to Mars. You hear me? I guess that could have gone better. Eh, better remind Adam he's not real again. I'm not real? I mean, that's convincing, right? Having a stranger repeatedly call you to tell you you're not real? Oh, and now that some time has passed, I have to point out that even though we were at the club where police straight up gunned down unarmed civilians, none of this gets mentioned on the news. No, excuse me, the police bots gunned down unarmed civilians, since no actual officers were present. I don't know if the bots were remotely controlled by officers or if this was 100% AI. I mean, this massacre occurred in the same city as the Voids, so this is just down the road from their headquarters. But we have complete silence on it. Now, I don't know if this was an oversight of the game, or if this is totally on purpose. 
Like, the game will tell you some things, but let you piece together others. I'm impressed. And yes, I would label this as plausible for 2048. It might not even be as intentionally sinister as you think, where maybe in the future, local news is 100% dead, and it's only globally syndicated stuff that influential people in media want to promote. So cop bots massacring a bunch of dancers isn't the sort of news that pleases investors, so we don't hear about it. And I say not as sinister, but it could still take us to the exact same place as though this was a 100% intentional cover-up. Maybe it's because of the future city architecture, but I can't help but think back to Deus Ex Human Revolution. Besides the yellow tinting, my big complaint with that game was how one-dimensional the portrayal of everything was. Almost everything in that game ties back to cyborgs. State of Mind does not have that problem. I mean, we have issues of digital consciousness, news manipulation, an East versus West divide, pseudo-police state, digital tracking, creep of corporate influence into everyday life, a Mars colony, even though I think that's bullshit, nanoscans, what's that about? AI and androids everywhere. Oh yeah, and remember Jay? He's augmented. His arm is augmented human revolution style, and it's no big deal. The only relevance it even has to the story is that it was used to help identify him, because a prosthetic arm is distinctive. That's it. That doesn't make him the next phase of human evolution. It makes him a guy missing an arm who can still function just as well. Cigarettes won't help you when we run out of water. So you say. Yeah, see? They unfortunately don't go into that one, but water shortage, that's another good future topic. Not to mention, the dialogue here just feels more natural. Despite being much smaller in scope, State of Mind gives you a much richer portrayal of a future society than Human Revolution. Now sure, Human Revolution shows you a lot more visually, but this game shows your mind more. But enough of the future present, back to future flashbacks. We actually have Richard's memories this time, though there's not a lot to them. I guess there's Drone Gate, then there's everything else. I find it interesting Tracy has a drink vending machine in her workout room. This feels like a mapper who is under a deadline. Also, the food assembler's busted. Estimated cost 900 credits. Yeah, see, I think among some people, there's this image of machines magically working and solving our problems and printing our food. But not only is that food assembler not going to be very practical, but it's going to be really expensive just to maintain it. And we get a flashback to Richard's earlier car accident. A self-driving car malfunction, and it's not a small one. He was completely locked out of the controls, it was unresponsive, he couldn't even force manual control. Boom. Yeah, okay, I think he is lower upper class. Because in addition to them both having significantly paying careers, you could sue the pants off the car manufacturer for this. You were trapped in a death box, you tried everything to stop the vehicle, but none of the safety features functioned. There was nothing you could do. Oh, and his wife was going into labor at the time. Lawyers would salivate over a case like this. Though that's by present standards. In the future, I could see us slowly losing all rights when you use products or services from a major corporation. Oh, and I'm pretty sure this was just for artistic flair, but I couldn't help but notice this off-center keyboard on the laptop Adam is looking at these memories on. Believe it or not, I'm going to rank this as plausible also. It's not that this is a good idea, but I could see a new CEO for a company like Apple wanting to make his name and releasing a new model having something stupid like this in order to stand out. It would likely flop after a few years, but that wouldn't stop it from getting made. We're still not going to be doing the transparent screen thing. That's just a mess. Nor will we have slanted edges on the monitor like at your work. Though mega super ultra wide screens, eh, maybe. And more flashbacks. This time it's Richard's mistress, Lydia. We're pumping her brain full of nano liquids, and she's scared. I don't get it. How weird. Must be some strange fear of death. So weird. The investors demand results, or else they'll switch off our lights at the end of this quarter. Excuse me? God, I hate these people. I offer them immortality, and they ask for a price. We need immortality by next quarter, people. We will change humanity. We will deliver them. Deliver? How? 
All we make here are zombies and terrible robots. We can't even get a damn prosthesis right now. Suddenly we're doing brain transfers? The arm is your mess, not mine. Yeah, sounds like a tech startup to me. There's a lot more of her life, but it's pretty skippable. Though we do get a clue as to how much credits are worth. Money has been transferred to your account. 400 credits. One month's rent? Not bad. Okay, she lives in this apartment in New York City. With one roommate. Now the game says it's in a bad part of town, but still. I hesitate to date this video so quickly by stating it in dollars, because that's gonna be a moving target. But I think we can deduce credits are not cheap. Also, I was gonna say Richard got robbed on that taxi ride at the start for 25 credits, but if we're having an oil crunch in 2048, maybe that's not insane. And once again, the game lets me choose whether to take Richard's money or not. Of course I'll take your money, Richard. Don't even worry about it. Back in Atom World, our robot is glitching out. It dropped a glass earlier, now it might be having an existential crisis. Something does not feel right. My hands. These are not my hands. I had other hands. I think I have done something terrible. This makes me think maybe it's Tracy's brain scan inside the android and the system's not so ironed out? Station avatar for Uh oh. When her face was scarred in a Look at you, hacker. -er. A p pathetic creature of meat and bone. Uh, meanwhile, Jake contacts you about bringing down the system and says one of their operatives, Charlie, hacked his way into the VR world, but they've lost contact with them. Okay? My family's on Mars? They better not be. They're not on Mars. Good. How do I know? Because this is what the colony really looks like. Not a lot of future, is there? The entire Red One project's a fraud. Oh, called it! There's no future on Mars, guys. So it was all just a front for uploading people to the cloud. So that's what the nano scans are about? Hmm, we'll come back to this. Well, Adam was not killed by his house bot and has another memory. This one is the biggest so far. It's for the robot in Richard's house. Jay hacked them to have free will or something and the bot leads a revolt at the factory and others follow him. What I find hilarious is after the robots are liberated, the hacked one is the only one with any initiative. The others just stand there waiting for additional programming essentially. Yep, that's AI. And before he left, he also overheard a conversation between Tracy and Steve Jobs. I'm a little fuzzy here, but it looks like she made a back deal to have her and her family uploaded to the cloud. Hmm. But after escaping, the robot goes and discovers your kid who ran away, so he brings him back and the family's like, aw, can we keep him? But Richard is very not cool with this. It is not human, you understand? It's not real. So? It can't live. It's false. Your vacuum cleaner's not alive either, Richard. So he gets pissed and is like, blah, I'm going to go have an affair. Well, no. Okay, he doesn't say that exactly. He just says he's going to New York. Back with Adam, he has a big reveal that his doctor is lying to him. And he really is code in a simulation and is shocked by this. But again, he's just a digital construct, so who cares? I guess it all depends on how much you think the AI is actually thinking or just running a program. I think it's a program. The more interesting part is the failure rate of uploading people's brains to the cloud. It mostly works, but you kind of want 100% for that sort of thing. Not 85, which is what they seem to have here. Oh, and there's this kind of annoying mini stealth game navigating the neon maze here. I only bring this up since there have been a few sequences like that in the game that require some basic arcade skills. So this is not a game for pure adventure game types that are only in it for the puzzles in the story. None of them are hard, but I think this sort of thing does alienate at least a slice of your audience for this genre in particular. And speaking of the game, the music is largely unremarkable. It's alright, but none of it I found particularly great. They also abuse two themes for Richard and Adam that they play maybe 10 times more than any other track. Anyway, once Adam is shocked by finding out his world is a lie, he stumbles into a breakpoint sleeper agent, and I like their conversation. We're so happy. We don't need drugs. Fascists. Reckon machines can develop morals. So naive. Sir? The machines don't want to be like us. It's the opposite. They want us to become like them. Training us like pets. If we're lucky, they'll feed us. Us. There's no us here. You don't exist. 
Nothing here exists. Sir, would you mind speaking a little softer? Ah, shut your face, you data package. Couple things there. First, the machines are just a tool from the people running them. So in this case, hate the player, not the game. You'd think a hacker would know that, rather than being resentful of the machines themselves. And that's the other thing. Both he and Richard start talking to AI constructs directly and argue and berate them. Whereas if they really know that they're machines, then they should know the pointlessness of insulting an AI. It's a machine. They're taking the bait, which they know is bait. Is this game going to make me pull out the video clip? Yeah, I think it is. It's a machine, Scroder. It doesn't get pissed off. It doesn't get happy. It doesn't get sad. It doesn't laugh at your jokes. It, it just, just runs programs. programs. It's still true, guys. Fight me. Well, he's giving Adam an existential crisis, so he flies off to the Forbidden Zone where his virtual wife works to find out what's going on. It's a lot of smog for Utopia. He gets intercepted and starts having an argument with her. Look, it doesn't matter who I am. I'm someone who wasn't happy. So I made a decision, and now I'm here. Just like you. What's wrong with that? Everything. It's unnatural. So? And what's actually natural? Genetic lottery, sickness, decay? The whole list is depraved. Man, I see this sort of thing so often in tech. I think she has half a point. Something being natural doesn't innately make it good. But the digital consciousness here isn't really an alternative either. I mean, first off, this isn't going to happen. I'll bet basically any amount of money it won't. And yes, that's despite Elon Musk saying he's already uploaded his brain to the cloud. I'm saying that's not what happened. But within the game, let's assume this works and they can get a one-to-one -one copy of your brain uploaded into the cloud. Well, then it's just a copy of you. You're still stuck in your own body. So a digital copy of yourself could theoretically be immortal, but that doesn't do you much good, does it? So she can decry the cruelty of nature all she wants, and she's right, but that doesn't mean what she's doing is a solution to that either. Well, Adam's not in a much better mood about this than I am, but Amy has a proposal. We have a memento program. We could reset everything. The last few days, everything Nolan told you. So erase your memory from the past few days. Well, that's kind of like losing your saved game. Nah, it'll be more interesting if we don't do that. Oh shit! Did I just kill Bob Cratchit? Going by Christmas Carol rules? This analogy might be breaking down. Yeah, that's the thing about being a computer program. Your choices are limited. Well, a lot of people are looking for Richard. They were looking for him in the flashback, too. Richard, some men were asking after you. What? Who? They didn't say. What did you tell them? That I haven't seen you in three days. I apologize if I have caused you any trouble. Huh. <laughs> you lied? I didn't know you could do that. Neither did those men. Yeah, I think this robot's a keeper. But we need to find some more clues. I love this menu. Find secret lab. You ever have that button when you sit down to use your computer? Yes, I think I will find the secret lab. I found the secret lab, and not a moment too soon. Steve calls to let me know I'm a fugitive. Breakpoint used my ID to disseminate a message or a virus or something, so that sucks. This is really getting in the way of me finding the secret lab, guys. But Richard has a fake ID and a hack tool left over from Breakpoint. Otherwise, I'd say it would be impossible for him to escape unless he was using transportation with no ID tagging at all, which could be quite limited in the future. We hack our way into the train station, then Jake calls us, tells us he's burning our ID, and thinks we ratted him out. They make contact with Charlie. You remember Charlie. But he's been deleted. Oh. Jake kind of doesn't care if I'm innocent or not, and says I'm screwed. Thanks, buddy. Wait, what? Hello? Who are you? What? Oh, so my decision didn't even matter. Adam's back up and doesn't remember anything. So even though they deleted him, they must have just loaded an old backup of him. So him being deleted meant nothing. There was no point to that decision. Well, we meet up with Lydia since she changed her mind about hating us again. That's good. Then we go to the secret lab and oh, she sold you out too. You were right. He doesn't get it. Thanks for bringing him here. What? Wow, Richard's pissing off everybody. Your little friend is one of our products, Mr. Nolan. Artificial. 
Wait, does that mean Lydia is a robot too? I'm getting a little lost. Well, she actually doesn't want to sell him out, but she has a terminal illness and the secret lab can save her. Except, uh-oh, the doctor betrays her. I'd say you live on borrowed time. Then perform the transfer, like now. All right, the transfer. Oh, look, Lydia, we've decided to go another route. You're worse than Scrooge, dude. But then he's like, oh, let me take this phone call and turn my back to you. I can't just kill him. Oh, come on. Now you're just toying with us, game. You're just toying with us. Yeah, we have to do it the hard way and mix up a sleep serum. Yeah, just go to sleep. Just fucking go to sleep. Well, long story short, we rescue Richard, but he gets caught again. Richard, you idiot. We rescue him again, then the most interesting part is him stumbling onto Steve Jobs' speech for the investors. They've been scanning the populace to see who are the best genetic candidates for having their brains uploaded, then pitching that as immortality to the investors. Moreover, Richard's son is part of the presentation. His reasoning is because his brain will be unrestrained in the cloud, he'll grow to become some sort of super being. That's not a completely insane concept, but would require an understanding of the brain way, way better than anything we'll have in 2048. This also means I think Jobs was just being a dirty old man in the flashback, because he was looking for the candidates with the best genes, making him single out Tracy. Unless people have super obvious mutations or diseases that you can see, you can't tell someone's genetic health just by looking at them. That's not how genes work. I think he thought Tracy was hot, so she must have good genes. And that's as far as his thinking went. Oh, a fusion battery! Yeah, the game just casually throws that in there. That might change the world more than any other technology presented in the game. And it's recyclable, no less. Of course it is. Isn't that what the Terminators use to power themselves? I can't remember if that was fusion or fission. Maybe fission. I guess that's not impossible, but I wouldn't bet on it. That would be such an incredible breakthrough and a civilization game changer. Well, we stole away on some cargo plane to find your family's cryo containers, since Steve Jobs still has their bodies. Yeah, that's another thing that's not happening. We're not bringing people back from freezing them. We're kind of going off the rails more and more, but I can tell the game is using it as a plot device rather than trying to make any sort of statement about it. And with that in mind, it's into the sewers so we can hijack the subway to crash the turret gun. Ha! Ah! Then here we are in Breakpoint Steampunk Hideout. Jay's already hacked into VR world and is going to destroy the servers remotely. But we can hack him! See? Did it. Now he can't come back. Ba ba bum And lo and behold, our trusty robot shows up hauling our family's bodies through the sewers and subway system. The game tried a little bit to make this make sense, but whatever, everybody's here. Flashing back to Adam's kid, who is really Richard's kid, he makes his way to the Forbidden Zone. Steve Jobs' avatar needs to head back to his body, so he beams out. Then Jay comes in and tries to beam out, but he can't because we're holding his body for leverage. Well, he doesn't have time for this since the servers are going to blow, so he's like, aha! I'll just download into Steve Jobs! Yeah, why not at this point? Brains are just hard drives, right? Just wipe his and add yours. Then his ambiguously sinister lady friend posing as your virtual kid's virtual mom beams out. Then Lydia says hurry up and upload her into the cloud since she's dying. But isn't Breakpoint about to blow it up? All right, whatever. Bzz. Now she's the virtual mom. Then your son finally beams out. Ta-da! And after being presented with inconsequential decisions the entire game, it hands me a bombshell. Download Lydia into Tracy's body, or download Tracy back into hers. Man, what a decision. I mean, they're both basically good people, even though I thought Lydia was a little kinder. I'd say the biggest difference is while they've both had hardships, Tracy's are more self-imposed, whereas Lydia never really had a fair shot. So I'm a little more sympathetic to her. Though some of what Tracy did was likely a direct result of Richard cheating on her. This is about as murky as it gets. Fine, let's do Lydia. This is gonna be weird. Yes, remember, brains are just hard drives. That's all they are. Still, what a decision. I don't think this translates to a Christmas story. 
This would be like asking a kid he needs to choose who gets to live, his parents or Santa Claus. And to be aware that Santa helps millions of people, but only once a year. Now for some kids, that decision would be easy. In both directions, honestly. But for a lot of others, yeah, that's a tough choice. And the cloud is starting to fall. There's nothing we can do. Maybe we could. I could download it. To me. What? The, the whole city? The amount of data is too much. I can do it. Oh, the kid wants to go Johnny Mnemonic on us. Yeah, the whole city. Download every resident into your head. Oh, wow. They want me to choose this, too. In for a penny, in for a pound. Yeah, let's go weird all the way. Is everything okay? You're not gonna have a normal life, kid. Yeah, everything's okay. Yeah, sure it is. And that's the game. Lydia acclimates in her new body, and your son is tripping balls for life now. So what happens if I do the opposite? Download Tracy back. Good day, Richard. Tracy. I am Sally, Richard. I am happy to be with you again. Oh god, her brain scrambled! She still thinks she's a robot! Oh, we definitely should have done Lydia. And if we tell the kid no, you cannot download an entire society into your head, young man, then he's just kind of depressed. Well, that's easily better than plenty of other endings I've seen. Though I feel like we had a lot of loose ends. For example, it was never clear to me how Richard went from being partially uploaded to being in the hospital and being told he was in a car accident. Though that's not that important. It was pretty decent, though I feel like we could have pushed the dilemma even further. Like, say we were actually able to transfer our consciousness into the cloud full stop. But the environment in the real world was slowly collapsing, and this was the only way we could save everyone. That would be dystopian, but a more positive one, since it's not going from maximum misery the way a lot of them do, but it's just doing a lot of unnatural and creepy stuff instead. Personally, I found that there can be a lot of big problems that can have weird and really unconventional solutions that involve sacrificing something else. I find stuff like that interesting. Though this cloud world was never going to make it anyway. I mean, the main problem was it was run by megalomaniacs, and that will inevitably lead to decisions that will cause its downfall. But even without that, it's estimated Carrington events come around every century or so. So these computers would need to be seriously hardened against interference and disruption, and I doubt they are. I realized in playing this, I was actually critiquing the realism more than I usually do. I think that's because it had so much in the game that felt plausible. Usually in science fiction games, they tend to lean towards the fun side of things, where you're not meant to think too hard. With stuff like ray guns, mechs, flying cities, and so on. In State of Mind, I want to say the majority of the concepts presented felt plausible to me. Even if it went off the deep end for a few of them. I didn't feel like it was aiming for the fun zone. It was aiming for the this could happen zone. So I saw it through a different lens. Ironically, the core theme of the game about mind transfer I found to be one of the least realistic. It might have actually helped if they took it a little less seriously so they could dive even deeper into the concept. The show Upload hasn't done a bad job of that sort of thing. As for the rest of it, if I was going to pull out my crystal ball, to me what felt the most off isn't exactly a mistake, but I think we got a highly curated view of the world and state of mind. Almost every area is upscale. And that makes sense if you're lower upper class. But I get the feeling there would be an enormous underclass by 2048 that would be almost unescapable. The dumpster turf fights in 2030 might end up being more real than even the game realizes. Awards! Broke Drone Gate. That's the episode! I think this ended up being a great Christmas choice. Christmas always feels kind of awkward and dysfunctional for me, and that's what this family story was too. Stay tuned for, uh... Yeah, Utopia, I think, maybe. Wait a minute, Richard's still wanted for cyber terrorism. That was never resolved. He's going to jail. I mean, sure, he can afford a good lawyer, but his fingerprints are all over the scene at the hacker den. I wouldn't want those odds. So, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas.